So um, today we are making turkey meatballs and sauce. Um, and as I mentioned, this is like an express version of these two recipes. They're sort of the, you know, gotta get dinner on the table really fast. Um, and these come together really, really quickly. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna put together is our weeknight tomato sauce, uh, which has just a few ingredients. It's not the simmer all day recipe that someone else's Italian grandmother makes, not mine. Um, so we've, we're gonna start, the, my first sort of shortcut ingredient is crushed tomatoes. We don't even have to take the back of, this, of a spoon and smash whole canned tomatoes. We, we start and everything goes into the pot. Um, so I've got a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes and it's just going right into a little saucepan. Okay, and I put in half of an onion just peeled and that's it. It goes right into the pot just like this. One whole clove of garlic right into the pot like that. Um, and then here's the sort of surprise ingredient which is three tablespoons of butter. Um, if you prefer to use olive oil or another non-dairy fat for whatever reason, that's fine. If you're kosher and you want to keep the dairy out of this, that works. Um, I will tell you that the butter adds a flavor and a richness that you're not going to get from another ingredient. Um, and per serving, it ends up being not very much butter. Um, we don't need two pots. You're going to need a sheet pan for the meatballs and a small saucepan for the for the tomato sauce. Um, so three tablespoons of butter goes into the pot and then um, some, I actually forgot what the, <laughs> what the measurement is. I think it's a half a teaspoon of salt and an eighth of a teaspoon of baking soda. And the baking soda goes in, um, I actually have this recipe in a book that I wrote uh, called the baking soda companion. Um, basically what the baking soda does is it cuts the acidity just a little bit uh, and sort of balances the flavor in the tomatoes. So a lot of times the tomato sauce recipe will call for adding a little bit of sugar, which kind of works, but this is actually a much better approach to balancing the acidity um, because baking soda is alkaline and so you add something a little bit alkaline to something that's sort of acidic, which is tomatoes, and you get a really nice balanced flavor. So all of those ingredients have gone into our crushed tomatoes, and I'm going to put those, put this on the stove on medium heat, and it's just really going to take about as long for this to become a really delicious sauce as it takes for us to make our turkey meatballs. So this is good. Hi, Michelle. Should I tell you really fast what we just did? Crushed tomatoes, half an onion, clove of it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, all of the ingredients that are listed for the quick tomato sauce have gone into a pot and that's going to go on my stove um, at about medium heat and we're just going to partially cover it. And when a recipe tells you to partially cover, what we're going for is a lid on, but not all the way. So you just sort of want to tip it a little bit. So that's going on my stove top. Girl, you have to be quiet if you're going to be in this room. Um, and that's going to just hang out on the stovetop, simmering, slowly bubbling. You're going to first see that the butter is going to melt, and then the onion will start to soften. And at the end, I'll show you that we're going to fish out the onion and the garlic clove. Um, and we'll have this nice, quick and easy, smooth sauce. Um, so while that's going, I have my oven preheated to 400. And in my bowl, I have a pound of ground turkey. You could substitute another meat here, same quantity. You could do a pound of ground beef. You could even do a pound of um, plant-based meat uh, and make these vegetarian meatballs. Um, really any ground chicken, it all works. Um, but I'm using ground turkey. And to this, I'm gonna add um, half a cup of breadcrumbs any kind of breadcrumb works here. Uh, you can get the seasoned Italian breadcrumbs. You could use panko if you wanted to. You could use 
gluten-free breadcrumbs, it's all fine. I've got just some regular breadcrumbs that I'm gonna pour in here. I have a half a cup of grated Parmesan. This, again, if you are kosher and you don't mix milk and meat, you could skip this. You might wanna up the breadcrumbs a little bit to like three quarters of a cup instead of half a cup. Um, but otherwise, Parmesan, if you happen to not have Parmesan, I've been in a, I've been in a situation where I'm halfway through making this and all of a sudden realize I don't have enough Parmesan and I did some mozzarella and that works too. So we have, I know we have a ton of Parmesan, but sometimes we don't have a ton of Parmesan. So I'm telling people what they could do if they don't have a ton of Parmesan. Right. And we've got one egg that just goes in and I hear my, I hear my sauce bubbling a little bit more aggressively than I wanted to, so I'm turning it down. Um, and then spices. So you could very easily do a teaspoon of garlic powder here. Um, I also wanted to show you a quick trick that I love. This is a, a microplane zester um, or a microplane grater. It has a lot of different names. Um, and I think that the fastest way when I'm in a really big hurry to mince a clove of garlic is to just take my microplane zester and my garlic clove that is peeled and just give it a quick zest. Um, and you'll see, it takes like no time at all. And then you just bang it off. And I should have showed you what that looked like. Hold on, I'll do a little more. See, it just sort of collects on the bottom there. Can you see that? So it's like perfectly minced and it takes two seconds. Um, and then I've got, you could do um, a quarter of an onion really finely minced or onion powder and um, a half a teaspoon of salt. And that just goes right into a bowl and you mix it. You could go in with your hands. Um, ground beef, I find I tend to need to use my hands because it's not quite soft enough to stir with a spoon, but the ground turkey is a little bit looser and so a wooden spoon works. I'm going to try to tilt this. So, I mean, it's not, there's nothing glamorous happening here. So, you're going to just mix that until it's really uniform. And then my other Another trick that I love when making meatballs is to get the size sort of uniform um, and just to make it sort of a, a little quicker is I, so I've got, um, I've got just a sheet pan and I think I mentioned my oven is preheated to 400. I've got just a, a regular sheet pan. I've got a piece of parchment on it. Um, you could grease it if you want. These have a tendency to stick just a little bit. So something underneath is a good idea. But then I like to use a small ice cream scoop. Um, and that is how I get my meatballs to be roughly the same size. So I just blob it to begin with. And then I'll go back with some wet hands and form them. Um, and I usually get, I don't know, it sort of depends. I usually get about, I don't know, 18 or 20 meatballs out of a pound of ground turkey. Um, so I listed, I think, a couple of optional ingredients in the recipe that I do not use only because of um, resistance from my roommates, <laughs> the small ones. Um, but you could put some grated lemon zest um, and some, if, if your family is not opposed to finding surprise green things in their meatballs, you could also put in some minced parsley or minced basil um, to add other flavor. Dried herbs work well also. Um, and one of the things that I love about meatballs as a quick weeknight meal is you could also completely change the flavor profile. So as long as you're sort of sticking with a ground meat and um, a binder like breadcrumbs and an egg, you can really switch up what you're doing. So if you wanted to do like an Asian meatball and serve it with rice, you could do garlic and scallion and maybe a little bit of sesame oil um, and ginger and that would completely change the flavor but the technique is the same. So 
I think that that's kind of fun. You could do a Greek one. You could, um, you know, with like a lot of lemon and garlic and oregano and even maybe like um, some minced up artichoke hearts. Anyway, the idea, a lot of ideas there. So now I'm gonna just wet my hands. And we're just, for, so if you're not using an ice cream scoop, this is roughly the size just for the cooking time that I'm gonna suggest that you're looking for. I would say that it's probably a little bit smaller than a golf ball. So we're just going for, for balls here. Okay, oh good, people have questions. Do you feel like there's a big difference between using a grater for the garlic or a garlic press? Um, I find that, I, I don't know, I don't have anything really strongly against garlic presses. I just feel like you lose a lot of garlic with a garlic press and they're hard to clean. Um, I happen to always just reach for the microplane for all kinds of stuff. It's how I zest lemons. It's, um, I just find it is really handy. Um, yes. Oh, one egg in the ingredient list. Should, one egg should be there. Yes, Jen. Um, it's actually sort of an interesting story about the, as I understand it, about the microplane, which is that it did not start out as a cooking tool. Apparently, a woman who's was, I think she was looking to really finely grate her Parmesan, and she was looking around in her kitchen, she couldn't find anything she really liked, and decided to go hunt in her husband's toolbox, and she found a rasp which I think is something that you use to like file down wood or something like that. Um, and so she stole it out of her husband's toolbox and figured out that it worked really well for the cheese. And so it stayed in her kitchen. And then eventually I think she was smart enough to market it as a cooking tool. And now they're like, everyone has a microphone. All right, I'm gonna just wash my hands. Um, and these are gonna go into my 400 degree oven. So hold on one second. <laughs> All right, so these are going into the oven. They're gonna go in for 15 minutes. Alexa, set a timer for 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Um, and in the meantime, my sauce has been bubbling away. And I'm gonna just show you what it looks like because it's sort of interesting what happens with the baking soda. Um, Thank you, Maddie, that's okay. So if you remember from, so you're gonna notice that it's a little bit foamy and that is because of the reaction between the acid and the baking soda. So sort of like when you were in science class as a kid and you combined vinegar and baking soda to make volcanoes. The same thing happens. It's a very tiny reaction because we're only, because tomatoes aren't, nearly as acidic as vinegar, and um, we're only using a very small amount of baking soda, but it's sort of the same idea. So if you see a little bit of foaming on the top of your baking soda, uh, on the top of your sauce, don't panic that there was something wrong with your tomatoes. Um, okay, so those are gonna hang out in the oven for about 15 minutes, and by that time, my tomato sauce will be sort of reduced a little bit, and they'll, we'll have some richness, <laughs> happy Earth Day, girls. Uh, it will have some richness from the butter and it will be really delicious. So um, as far as what to serve it, obviously pasta, this could all go on top of pasta, but we sort of like to change things up here in our house a lot. And very often when we're having meatballs, they end up on a sandwich. Um, so we'll do like meatball subs. My daughter is cheering right now at the idea of having meatball subs. <laughs> um, but there are really lots that you don't have to stick to pasta. Um, they can go on top of rice or something that's super duper quick for a weeknight when you really don't even have time to boil water, boil pasta water, um, is to make couscous because that's like a five minute undertaking. So you could always pile this on top of a bowl of couscous and it would be delicious. Um, Nancy, yes, I did put parchment 
on, but, but nothing else, uh, just parchment on top of the baking sheet. Um, the other thing I'll mention, I don't always do this, but you could, if you had a couple of extra minutes, sort of a nice thing to do on top of the meatballs is to take just a little bit of the sauce. You could even pull it out now before it's done. So I would take um, maybe three tablespoons of sauce and a tablespoon of olive oil and mix it together and then brush it on top of the meatballs. And it gives them just sort of like a nice glaze. Um, so I'm happy to, stay on until the meatballs are done and you can see what they look like and I'm happy to answer any questions but that really is as easy as it gets so I mean you've got time to make a salad and open a bottle of wine and then that's it you're done uh, does anybody have any other questions for me about this or anything else I could teach you I could tell you right now how to make um, three different kinds of slime. We've done that in the last two years. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't recommend marshmallow slime. We learned the hard it's way. It's edible. We learned the hard way, but that's, that's not a great slime. Yeah, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, and uh, I'm going to leave it on, but I wanted to um, end, and, uh, and then I'm going to press stop on the recording. So. Uh,